All righty, thank you so much for to everybody for joining us today. We're really um, excited about this afternoon or this evening session and um, wherever you're joining from and we'll be looking at why choose SOAS. So this is a really um, or hopefully will be a very helpful presentation um, if you're at the outset of your research into where to study across different levels or even if you've already applied and are starting to whittle down um, the universities that you might choose from. We'll talk through some of the main things that sort of um, distinguish or differentiate the SOAS experience and then there'll be just some brief information slides in terms of how you might want to take forward an application and different things that we look for but the main idea of today is just to give you a really brief um, insight into what we're about as an institution. I'm joined on the call today by my colleagues Dan and Rachel and alongside Dan and Rachel, we work together in the Recruitment and Admissions Office at SOAS. And so if at any point you think of any questions or you want to know some more information about points that are raised, you can use the um, questions box in the panel on your screen to submit those. And then as we go through, Dan and Rachel will be able to um, answer and reply. And we'll also have some time for a more open Q&A um, at the end of the presentation. So do let us know, ask away if you have um, any questions and we'll be sure to pick those up. The other thing to say is that today's session is being recorded. So please don't worry about frantically taking any notes or making sure to note stuff down. We'll circulate this along with answers to your questions and different helpful links that should help you to take your research forward if you need to. The only other thing to say is if you are a current applicant who has um, questions about your specific application that are perhaps more detailed or narrow and personal to your specific circumstances, please do um, follow up by email. If you are an applicant, you should have received correspondence that will give you access to the admissions email address. And those are really the best email addresses to follow up to make sure that we can get you the tailored help and support that you need. And then towards the end of the presentation, we'll make sure we give you the more general um, email address that you can follow up and get in contact with. So let's begin. And I think before we sort of talk about the specific reasons why you might want to choose SOAS, it's useful just to um, say at the beginning, in terms of who are we and what do we embody as an institution, the main thing to know is that SOAS is a specialist institution. So SOAS stands for the School of Oriental and African Studies, and we are a specialist institution with um, academic and research expertise in the regions of Africa, Asia and the Near and Middle East. And then within that specialism, all of the programmes that we offer sit across the arts, humanities and social sciences. In terms of then why you might want to come and study with us, the first thing that we like to point to um, is our location. So if you do join SOAS, you will have the opportunity to study in the heart of central London. SOAS is located in Bloomsbury, which is a beautiful leafy part of central London, close to lots of recognisable landmarks and just round the corner from other really well known London based institutions such as UCL and Birkbeck. And this map here then just gives you a little bit better of an idea of where exactly you'll find us. You can see us in the little blue ring there. And if you have ever visited London and you've gone along to the British Museum, then you'll know exactly where we are. We're just around the corner. It's a wonderful museum and definitely something that you should go and visit if you do decide um, to come and see what we're about in person or to visit the campus. The British Museum is well worth a visit. And in terms of museums, it's worth noting that SOAS is home to its own exhibition space called the Brunei Gallery, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But the Brunei Gallery makes up part of London's Museum Mile, which is a collection of about 14 museums and galleries that run all the way from Bloomsbury right the way down to the Thames and closer to the River Thames on the map then you'll see lots of very instantly recognisable landmarks like Big Ben and the London Eye, the Parliament and you'll have the chance to um, explore all of that if you do choose to join us um, as a student. It's also worth highlighting that we have a really convenient location in terms of transport links, be that in terms of the tube or picking up the Piccadilly line to go to Heathrow Airport 
or Kings Cross and Euston stations if you want to make the most of your time in the UK and travel further afield. We're very conveniently located um, no matter where you want to explore. And of course, London is a city that's really um, designed for an excellent for students. And that's reflected in its ranking as the best city in the world in the 2022 QS World Best Cities ranking for students. And part of what makes London so great um, is that it's a really cosmopolitan and a really diverse city. You'll see lots of different nationalities and backgrounds represented. You would hear more than 300 um, languages spoken if you had a walkabout for long enough and there's always lots going on. I mentioned the museums and there's also always lots of festivals, music performances, arts events taking place across the city. And you won't just sort of have the support of the SOAS community or the wider University of London community, but you'll also have the support of students at um, a whole host of institutions across the capital. There's about 350,000 students um, in London for you to get to know and connect with, so there'll always be something to do. And it's also worth um, just pointing out the vast array of businesses and NGOs and um, organisations, international organisations that call London home. And so in terms of navigating and thinking about future job prospects or employability beyond that, then there's lots of opportunities to sort of tap into these networks, to apply for work experience and really make the most of being in the city. Another reason why you might want to think about um, applying to SOAS or choosing to study with us is the facilities that you'll have access to as a student. And we know that those um, facilities really impact on your learning experience. And so hopefully these next few slides will just give you a little bit of a flavour of some of the facilities that you can use. But firstly, I just wanted to show you this little snapshot um, of our campus. So SOAS has its own little sort of campus pedestrianised area that you can see um, on the screen here and as part of our little area we have three main buildings and so on the left of the screen the red building, red brick building is the Brunei gallery that I mentioned um, just a second ago and that's home like I said to an exhibition space in addition to teaching um, rooms and breakout areas. On the right of the screen you'll see a much taller building um, with the sort of cross pane windows. That's the main SOAS college buildings and that's where you'll find the majority of our academic offices, the library, the students union space. And finally, towards the back left hand corner of the screen, hopefully you can see a little white building at the back or a very tall white building if you could see the full picture. But that's the Paul Webley wing and that's the third component of our campus. And within that, um, we have key student services and more sort of teaching buildings that you'll be able to access. But it's a very lively area on Thursdays. We welcome a farmer's market that sets up in between SOAS and our neighbours UCL and Birkbeck. There's always lots going on and lots for you to do. And when we think about SOAS sort of facilities, one of the main things that our students and people that you speak to will probably mention is the SOAS library. So this is um, located in our main college building and it's one of the most impressive resources that we have at SOAS. It has featured in some films and TV shows so it might look familiar but it is an extremely extensive archive of resources, of volumes and materials related to our key regional specialisms of Africa, Asia and the Near and Middle East. And so it's one of five national research libraries in the UK, and that's owing to its importance and the significance of um, the resources that we have relating to those areas. And it happens to be the largest East Asian library collection in Europe. And so if you are invested and interested in these regions, then you should be able to find every resource that you could wish for um, within our library. The library, you can guess from the previous picture, is a huge, huge space. It spans six floors and each of those floors is dedicated or sort of focused on a specific regional area. And across that, we have more than 1000 student workspaces that you can utilise if you want areas for quiet study um, to move through your coursework. 
Another area that's worth mentioning, and I just mentioned this a second ago, is the Paul Webley Wing, and that sits within the sort of larger Senate House building that's home to different sort of parts of the wider University of London group. The Paul Webley Wing is the newest addition to our SOAS buildings, and it opened in 2016, during the time that the university was celebrating its centenary year. And perhaps if you have started your research into SOAS as an institution, you'll have come across pictures, this picture or pictures like it that show our students relaxing um, and making the most of this night nice bright um, open atrium space and that space is used a lot by our students for different events for just general relaxation for um, informal study information fairs lots of different things and just off of that is where you'll find key student services the student hub advice and well-being career services so it's likely if you have to access support as a student during your time on campus that you'll come to find what you need within the Paul Webley wing and like I mentioned, it's also home to more traditional teaching areas, lecture theatres, seminar rooms, a cafe, lots of different spaces that you can make use of. And finally then, just to um, give you some more information on the Brunei Gallery that I mentioned, it is part of the London Museum Mile and the exhibition space is over two floors and hosts changing exhibitions that are in some way related to our key regional specialisms of Africa, Asia, or the Middle East. And as a student, you'll have free admission to the gallery. Another really fun or sort of different thing that you'll have access to is the Japanese roof garden at the top of the Brunei Gallery. And that's a really nice space just to escape the hustle and bustle, to have your lunch and the peace and quiet, um, and just take a moment out of your day studying. And as always, we do have within the Brunei Gallery, again, typical teaching and lecture spaces where you may take some of your classes during your time at SOAS if you come to study with us. Perhaps the other thing to mention if we consider student facilities and the spaces that you have access to is student accommodation. And I know if you're a student considering joining us from further afield and perhaps from um, another country and student accommodation will be one of your top priorities and really has the ability to influence your experience for the positive or sometimes unfortunately for the negative and so we work really hard to um, provide our students with lots of different um, halls of residence options lots of different um, preferences that you can select from to make sure that those options meet your needs and help you to have the best experience. And we do that by working with a number of different accommodation providers and we review those regularly. At the moment, our halls of residence, just to give you a little idea in terms of price point, our halls of residence range from between 157 to 299 pounds per week. And all of the accommodations that we offer our students are within a two to a 45 minute journey time from campus. So in some cases, you'll be able to roll out of bed and turn up at your class within the five minute span. But all of those accommodations are within a reasonable um, commute and short walk of the SOAS campus to keep things nice and simple. Like I mentioned, there's various room types available. So whether you um, have a preference for a single or a shared room, um, catered accommodation, en suite, whatever that may be, I would really encourage you to go along to our website where we'll update um, the different accommodation options that we have available and provide lots more detailed guidance and advice in terms of what that application process looks like and the sort of service and options that you can expect as we look ahead to the new academic year. And of course, those options do um, cater to students with sort of who need um, adapted living accommodation and we also have couples and families housing available although that does tend to be in a much much smaller number. Generally speaking applicants are able to apply for student accommodation in the spring. This time last year it was March that our students could apply ahead of, ahead of a September start um, and you to be able to do that you need to have selected SOAS as your firm choice. The only other thing to mention is that, of course, you don't have to stay in student accommodation and lots of our students um, choose to live 
um, in private rented accommodation that offers a different type of experience and SOAS is nice and um, convenient for lots of different transport points so you have lots of different options in terms of the different areas and parts of London that you could look to find private rented accommodation. Like I mentioned, any questions, please do head over to our website and there you'll also find the email address for our accommodation manager if you would like to follow up and get um, specific advice relative to your situation. Another reason why you might choose to join us at SOAS is our really diverse and active student community. It's really international and our students have a well-deserved reputation for being very, very active and really um, engaging to make a positive difference, both within the SOAS community and further afield. This screen then just gives you a little snapshot of SOAS in numbers and a better idea of our student body and what that looks like. But as I said, it's a very international student body. We have students join us from more than 135 countries, so lots of backgrounds and cultures represented within that. And across our student body, about 54% of our students are international, which is something that we're really proud of and something that we really think contributes to the richness um, of the learning and student experience at SOAS. And within that student body, it's about a 50-50% split between undergraduate and postgraduate, which again just really adds to um, the life experiences and the knowledge and the different perspectives that our students bring. Generally speaking, in a normal year, we have just over 6,000 students join us on campus. And um, we're really excited. We've been we've loved over term one of this year, seeing our students return and join us again after the pandemic. And we're really hopeful to continue that as we move into term two after the um, festive break. And we also, in addition to our on-campus learners, we have a distance learning cohort of about 4,000 students. And those are students who are pursuing um, online master's study from around the world. And again, it's great to um, hear the perspective that they bring, the different life experiences that they contribute. And that aspect in terms of distance learning is growing all the time. So depending on your professional or your personal commitments, if you're thinking about master's study, it could be a good option for you. As I mentioned, SOAS students have a very well-deserved reputation for being really active and engaged, and there's lots of different ways that you can get involved in student life. Um, as a SOAS student, our students union um, oversee more than 100 different student societies, and those range from sports-based societies to um, political societies, music clubs, different subject-based groupings, to the more sort of niche ones, things like origami society or drag society at SOAS. So whatever your interest, you should be able to find a group of people who share that. And if not, the Students Union can support you to find those people to set up societies um, and to connect across the community. In terms of the facilities, again, the Students Union has in terms of facilities, again, the Students' Union has access to a common room, a shop, there's a bar, always very lively. Our students um, spend time there and host lots of different events, different live music, film screening events. The um, students are always engaged in campaigning and promoting and fighting for causes that they feel really passionate about. So there's lots to get involved with as a student and lots of ways that you can contribute to the community. As I've mentioned, um, Previously in the presentation, SOAS is part of the wider University of London grouping that encompasses 18 member institutions, and I'm sure you'll know many of them. But the main thing to emphasise here is that membership, that overarching affiliation, just gives you access to even more resources um, and student connections um, during your time as a student at SOAS. So if you want to go and use other libraries to supplement your learning or to access resources in a different area, for example, then that is very much possible. And if you want to um, find out more about the student community aspect and how you can engage through overarching University of London societies, then I'd really encourage you to hop along to the Student Central website on the screen there, which will have lots more information. And finally then, before we move on to the 
academic side of things. Another reason why you might want to um, think about SOAS or to do more research and consider it as an option for study. Um, if you are considering um, study in the UK or pursuing further options is the fact that we are a globally recognised institution with um, really strong rankings in our specific area of the arts and humanities. Like I said before, SOAS is pretty small in comparison to a lot of other UK higher education institutions, being only about 6,000 students on campus, but we are definitely mighty when it comes to our impact. And we see our researchers, our professors, our alumni go on to influence policy and to shape thinking in regards to different and pressing issues um, within our societies today. And you can see that when you research the work of our centres and our institutes across different subject areas. And I would really encourage you to go online and look at the work that those centres are doing. Look at the different events that we're hosting. The majority of them are virtual and free to connect with and are listed on our events page, but they'll give you a really good and brief snapshot into the positive work and the high profile work that our academics and alumni are engaged in. I just briefly on that note wanted to touch on our rankings and of course rankings are not the be all and end all and they shouldn't be the sole basis of any decision making but what they can do is really help speak to the strengths of a particular institution and indicate the sort of quality of the learning experience that you can expect and one of the things um, that we're really proud of is our ranking within the global top 50 in for arts and humanities subjects according to the QS World Rankings by subject in 2021. And within that, some of our subjects are even higher if we look at things like development studies. So as currently ranks fifth in the world for development studies by this same ranking, just as it ranks 21st in the world for politics and international studies. And if we look closer to home and analyse that ranking, then six of our subjects currently feature in the UK top 10, as well as the institution sitting overall within the top 40 UK universities, according to the Times Good University Guide. I just wanted before we move on to highlight the final note on the screen, which is our student and staff ratio. And we're really proud of the fact that that is so small. At SOAS, you should never be in a seminar or a tutorial with more than 12 to 15 students. And we hope that that small scale teaching environment really gives you the opportunity to engage with your peers, to engage with your professors and to feel confident in sharing different perspectives and hearing different insights and exploring your subject in much more detail. If we move on then to the, the nitty gritty of academics at SOAS, hopefully this next, these next few slides will help you to think about whether SOAS could potentially be a good fit for you academically and across the different study levels and subject areas that we have. And before we look at each of those in detail, I just thought it'd be useful to look at the different subject levels that we have available. The first one being undergraduate, um, where we have about 250 single or joint honours degree programmes available. The majority of these last three years, which is typical for higher education institutions in England, although some of them are four years, and that's because those programmes incorporate a study abroad year. Now, at the moment at SOAS, that applies to students who are pursuing a language degree that incorporates a compulsory year abroad and also to students on our LLB Law with Study Abroad Pathway. We do hope to review these and we're looking at them all the time to make sure that we're offering our students the best possible opportunities. But at the moment, that is the framework for study abroad and where those opportunities lie. At postgraduate level, then, we offer um, taught master's programmes and research PhD programmes beyond that. At the taught master's level, we have about 150 different degree pathways and combinations and the vast majority of them are one year full time although they can extend to two years full time where students pursue an intensive language pathway and you'll see those clearly labeled um, on the website and it is worth saying that you do have the opportunity to pursue part-time postgraduate study at SOAS if you are a home student or a student who does not require 
an, um, a student visa to come to the UK to study. And the one thing to emphasise if we look at the 250 op options at undergrad and the 150 options at postgrad is the flexibility of the SOAS learning experience. We really want you to have the opportunity to tailor um, your learning experience to your specific academic interests and needs, be that in terms of the specific degree pathways and combinations that you take or in terms of the modules that you use to build up um, your curriculum. The third pathway that we have available is for, for foundation and we have distinct pathways within our foundation offering. The first one being the BA BSc with foundation year. That's designed as a domestic foundation year for students who perhaps have studied A-level but just fallen short of the grade requirements or studied IB and just fallen short of the grade requirements. And it's designed to just give you that extra year of preparation as part of a year zero, if you like, that allows you to progress directly through year one, year two and year three of undergraduate study beyond that. For students joining us um, from further afield, from abroad, who perhaps don't have the required academic level of attainment to date or need additional English language support to arrive at the necessary level of study um, of English language. Sorry, we do offer an international foundation program called the ICC and equally for students in a similar boat who are looking to pursue master's study, we do also offer a pre-masters. These are both standalone qualifications, the international um, ICC Foundation and the pre-masters that you can take that qualification to progress to undergraduate or postgraduate study at a number of excellent universities in the UK and they all as well as progressing to SOAS programs and they all last 10 months they just follow the normal academic calendar. So those are the two options to be aware of at foundation and finally, if you are thinking that you would like a distance learning option, then we have those available at master's level. And currently there's about 20 online courses that you can find listed on the website. And those cover six different broad subject areas. Generally speaking, our distance learning courses last anywhere from two to five years. And that flexibility and the different options are designed to acknowledge that students are perhaps completing master's distance learning study alongside ongoing professional or personal commitments. And so that should help you to fit your study in around those ongoing commitments. Another thing that distinguishes distance learning is that there's multiple entry points. So you're not tied to the one traditional September intake. And for students who consider finance to be a barrier, then there is the option with distance learning to pay as you go on a module by module basis. And this next slide then, and I won't read out each and every um, subject on the list, but it just gives you a really detailed overview of what the subject areas that we teach are within our specialisms and sort of focus on Africa, Asia and the Middle East. And what you'll see is that some of them are more traditional in the sense of being discipline focused, be that economics or law, whereas some of them maintain a more regional and area specific focus. And if you want to see the specific pathways that are available, then the best thing to do is to head over to our website. But the one thing that we do stress in addition to the flexibility um, afforded by SOAS degrees is that interdisciplinarity um, as well. We want our students to understand how these different um, subjects intersect and interconnect and impact on one another. So we can't consider each subject in a vacuum, but they are all impacting and intersecting and that we hope that that's something um, that our students will value the opportunity to look beyond their specific um, subject area. In terms of the languages that we offer, um, you can see on the screen here that our language offering is very closely linked to our regional specialisms. So you won't find, um, for the most part, any of the sort of typical Western modern languages offered at most universities across the UK. But what you will find is a variety of languages that pertain to our regional academic specialisms. So 
absolutely our students have the opportunity at undergraduate level, for example, to pursue Japanese or a degree in Korean or Arabic. Again, we have intensive language pathways at Masters, but in some cases, these languages might just be one optional module that you pick up as part of your studies to complement your learning and to give you a brief insight into the language of the region. But all of the teachers on our language programmes have real life lived experience in these countries and a high, high um, degree of expertise in these languages. Thinking in more detail then about the um, support that we offer to you to help you succeed within those specific degree areas and programmes. One of the questions that we um, often get is in terms of contact hours, and that does vary programme by programme. Certainly, if you're on a language based course, you're likely to have more contact hours, and that's due to the interactive and often intensive component of language learning. I spoke a little bit about it um, earlier in the presentation, but one of the really great things about SOAS is the small class sizes and that low student to teacher, um, student to teacher ratio. And so you should find yourself in seminars and tutorials with lots of opportunities to engage, to interact, to put forward your viewpoints, to discuss competing arguments and to really get to know your professors and your peers. Every student at SOAS will have um, an advisor or a tutor to help guide your academic journey and to provide just some independent insight um, and overview in terms of your module choices and selection and how you're building um, your learning um, modules and pathway. And in terms of broader support, there is specialist guidance and support available across a range of areas. Um, play things like finances or immigration advice for international students, for students with additional um, learning needs, there's support that you can access um, as well, depending on what that specific need is. And I would really encourage you, if you are at the point of doing more research, to go onto the website to engage with the wellbeing hub and um, or service and to sort of really dig into what support would be available in your situation um, to help you succeed. The other thing to mention is in terms of career support and we know when you're making decisions that opportunities beyond study in terms of employability and graduate pathways are very much front and centre in students' minds and the career service at SOAS works to support you um, in that and in making those um, decisions and planning for the future. And one of the main ways they, that they do this is by um, giving you access to our digital platform Career Zone, which is really a one stop shop for listings of jobs, internships, and volunteering opportunities available both during or after study. Um, each year, we welcome a number of top employers and organizations such as the Civil Service, PwC the NHS, the Bank of England to our career spheres. Those have been virtual, but we very much look forward to when we can begin to host those companies and organisations on campus. And again, that's designed to give you opportunities to engage with top employers. And the variety of organisations and people that we host really speaks to the, the sort of wide array of graduate jobs that are um, students move into after their time with us. And if you want information or sort of more detail on the types of jobs that um, our students do move into, then if you go on to each of the individual subject pages that you're considering on our website, you'll be able to see a sample list um, there. One of the other ways that we help to support you is through alumni workshops or different sessions. If you do um, join us at SOAS, you'll eventually become part of an alumni community of more than 53,000 students from 190 countries. So we're very well represented internationally and we want to create opportunities for you to engage with those alumni. They're doing really amazing things. They're making positive impacts in lots of different sectors. And we want to make sure that you can access them in terms of advice and building connections and thinking more broadly about what life post-study will look like. And then the other thing to mention is the sort of tailored support that you can get, be that country-specific um, advice or CV 
um, guidance and even things like practice or mock interviews as you prepare for full-time graduate employment. You can access lots of support like that to make sure that you're as prepared as possible for moving into employment beyond your studies. And of course, there's lots of information on the website. Just briefly then, so we can try and leave as much time for questions as possible. In terms of the entry requirements that we look for for students who are considering study at SOAS, um, this is just very brief, but please be reassured there's lots of information on the website based on where you're applying from and the qualifications that you've studied to date. At undergraduate level, most of our requirements range from three A's at A level all the way through to ABB, with our highest tariff of course being our LLB Law Programme. And just to give you an idea of typical equivalence for IB students, that means we typically look for a range of between 33 to 37, depending on the course that you're applying from. We do accept a wide range of international qualifications and there's lots more information on the website. That includes qualifications such as the European Baccalaureate or the US High School Diploma in combination with um, AP exams or SAT or ACT tests. At postgraduate level, the main requirement is that you must have at least the equivalent of a UK high 2-2 for our admissions team to begin considering and reviewing your application. And alongside that, we will take into account, particularly at postgraduate level, um, any relevant work experience that you highlight as part of your um, application. If you are an international student, then you may have to provide proof of English language proficiency. And we have, again, much more information in terms of which students that is and possible exemptions on our website. But just to give you a little idea of the typical level that we would look for, the IELTS score that you can see on the screen, which is 6.5 overall, 6.5 in writing and 6 in other subscores, is the mark that you would need to qualify or to meet the in-sessional level whereby you could start at the traditional start date in September and just be able to access free and ongoing support um, in terms of English language through your studies. We do accept a wide range of tests and again you can find more information on our website as well as alternative qualifications in some circumstances and for students who perhaps just fall shy of that requirement then we do have pre-sessional courses available prior to our September academic year start date and we'll be sure to update our website with lots more information about our pre-sessional offering as we get closer to the new academic year beginning in September 2022. This slide then just gives you a brief snapshot of tuition fees. I won't read them out but you can see them on the screen and the main thing to note is the difference um, in fees for home or international students and also at postgraduate level um, the tuition fee is banded so it will fall into three categories um, one of three categories based on the specific program that you've selected and applied for. Finally then, just one last thing to point out, as I mentioned, our online distance learning programmes at master's level give students the option to pay on a module by module basis. And that can be a really helpful um, added flexibility for students who are perhaps concerned about um, the financial costs attached with for their study. Finally then, just a note on funding and scholarships. We have lots of information in terms of the range of scholarships and awards that are available to support students on our website. Please bear with us, our scholarships team are working hard to update the website as soon as they can and we're very hopeful that that will be set to go come the new year. But we are um, working to update those and it has to be said that in terms of SOAS, the majority of funding um, is focused on master's level study or postgraduate study um, across masters in our PhD programmes and just two examples that are confirmed to run next year are the International Postgraduate Scholarship which operates as a £3,000 fee waiver to offer holders from eligible countries and selection for that is based on a statement that you write in addition to previous academic merit and we'll also be running a similar partial fee waiver scholarship for UK masters applicants based on statement, merit and any relevant work experience. But there's lots of information available on the website. And like I said, full details of our 
wide range of scholarships will be available and updated shortly on the website. But if you do head over there today or in the coming weeks, what you will see is a good indication of funding that was available last year. We also work with different organisations and sponsor um, scholarship bodies, sorry, to offer students um, funding opportunities, be engaged with Chevening. We have a large cohort of Chevening scholars with us this year, which we're really excited about. We offer the Commonwealth Shared Scholarships each year. We have students with us from the Said Foundation, um, which gives opportunities for students um, from the Levant um, region of the Middle East to come and study with us as part of one year of master's study. And each year we do receive um, a large number of funded students, sponsored students um, who have their um, tuition funded by um, the ministry in their own country, for example, students coming from the Middle East, and we can absolutely um, accept that. So if you have any questions about that, do feel free to get in touch and we'll be very happy to walk you through that process. Finally then, just some useful resources that might help you um, in some further research. You've heard from me chatting for quite a while, but if you want to hear from our students, then please do head over to our chat with a student uni buddy page. You'll be able to hear from students across a wide range of subjects and from a wide range of um, countries about their own experiences on different programmes and at SOAS more generally. If you would love to get a flavour of what the campus is like, well, it's a bit more difficult to visit, then you can also check out our virtual tour, which will give you a little flavour of what our corner um, of Bloomsbury looks like. And finally, you can find details of our upcoming events and open days on our website, and I've listed them at the bottom of the page. We do have an upcoming virtual open day for undergraduates on Saturday, the 15th of January. And we're looking forward to our next postgraduate open evening in mid-February. But those are updated regularly, so do check them out. I think I'll stop there while we've still got um, some time for questions. And I know my colleagues, Dan and Rachel, have been responding to your questions as we've gone through. So I think what I'll do is I'll pass over to Dan and Rachel if they want to highlight some of the um, questions that have been popping up and just a reminder that anything that we don't get to through the session and um, we'll be sure to follow up by email to answer your questions and to provide a recording of everything that we've talked about. Great thank you very much Laura. Um, there's been some lovely feedback for you as well people have recognised that it's been a really information filled session so there's been some great questions coming in. Um, one that was asked sort of towards the start, and you might have touched upon a little bit, but could be a good one to talk about further, is whether there are any jobs on campus that are available while studying. Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned it briefly in terms of the career support that we offer our students, but we do offer a full listing of different part time employment, internships, volunteering, graduate roles via our digital platform. Um, called Career Zone, and we do have a lot of students who work part time to support their studies and to just provide a little bit more um, extra income. One of the main ways that you can do that, um, or one of the sort of most flexible ways you can do that, is by becoming a student amb ambassador. Um, just as an example, and as a student ambassador, you can sign up to different events based on your availability and it's flexible around your work and study schedule. And what you would be doing is representing the university at key events. So that might mean showing prospective students around as part of a tour um, on an open day. It might mean speaking with visiting school students and um, sharing your perspective or just supporting on ad hoc events. But that can be one of the most flexible um, and better ways to get involved and to provide some additional um, income during your time as a student. But of course, we advertise lots of different um, ways and means that you can do that on the Career Zone platform. Great, thanks, Laura. Um, this is something you did sort of highlight, but maybe we can talk about a bit further again, is with regards to scholarships and sort of financial aid opportunities, um, particularly for students who are uh, international. Yep, absolutely. And so the main thing to say is that we are working to update those opportunities as displayed on our website. So please do bear with us and we're hopeful that 
come to Angry, they'll be up to date and ready to go. And you can see the scholarships website on the screen, hopefully. Um, in terms of the funding that we do have available, it's primarily focused on postgraduate level um, at SOAS. And the awards that we do offer, be that from a SOAS perspective or in, in conjunction with external organisations, range from partial fee waivers all the way through to full tuition fees and in some cases maintenance as well and the main thing to highlight is that each of these scholarships has their own eligibility criteria and different stipulations attached and um, so you can see the example on the screen there for the international postgraduate scholarship there is different um categories or awards available based on the domicile of the student um, and also as part of that selection process we would then look at the motivations that they've highlighted in a statement in um, an academic attainment to date and there's specific criteria that differs um, for each scholarship and the other thing to mention is that they are highly competitive we do receive a large number of applications each year so I would just bear that in mind um, in terms of planning and researching and trying to make financial calculations about studying and sort of planning and budgeting as best you can but we encourage you to check those out to um, apply and um, yeah hopefully the information will be available and ready to go for September 2022 entry um, come the new year in early January at the very latest. Okay we've had a couple of questions about sort of uh, tuition fees so if we start mm -hmm. with one, which is uh, how do we pay the tuition fees and sort of what is the breakdown of this? Absolutely. So if you are um, a home student, then we have students every year who join us and are funded by student finance. And if you have any questions about um, what the sort of conditions or um, guidelines are around accessing funding from Student Finance England, then we have lots of information on our website and the SFE website also has a really comprehensive breakdown of the support offered um, and how you can access that. If you are a self-funded student, then you have the option to pay your tuition fees in two installments so that's something to think about and for our online distance learning master students as i mentioned then they have the flexibility either to pay their tuition fees as i've talked about before or to pay on a module by module basis but that um, flexibility only applies to our online distance learning students Great, thank you. And um, in a kind of related way, um, someone has asked about whether they will be considered as a uh, home or international student based upon their EU settlement status. So I appreciate, you know, you're not going to be able to give um, an exact answer without maybe knowing more detail, but could you maybe advise yeah. how they could sort of find out about this? Yep, so generally we do know some students will be in a bit more of a difficult situation based in terms of residence or nationality or whatever that looks like. And just to, as Dan said, well, we can't speak to individual cases. The main thing to reassure you if you have any doubt is um, that what our admissions team will do is if they look at your application and they think, OK, this could be a bit more complicated or warrants a bit more detail in terms of assessing the particular fee status of a student what they'll do is they'll get in touch with you and they'll ask you to complete what we call a fee status questionnaire that asks lots of different details and asks for you to provide relevant information and taking that information into account they'll then make a decision and follow that up if you are an international student who is looking for more information generally and wondering how different um, circumstances might apply to you then a really great website um, to check out is UKISA which stands for the UK Council for International Student Affairs it can help you think through likely um, outcomes or provide guidance based on um, your specific circumstance and I'd really encourage you it's a really useful resource it's completely impartial but it gives you just insight into some of the common um, 
concerns and questions that international students might have but just be reassured that if we have any doubt we won't automatically make a decision and that's it we'll ask you to complete a fee status questionnaire and we'll take all of the information that you provide into account in reaching a decision on your fee status and of course do get in touch if you've got any questions about your specific um, circumstance email is the best thing to do um, for those um, particularly sort of more personal or specific um, questions and situations. Great. Um, another one sort of linked to money as well. This is more to do with cost of living. So can we talk a bit about mm -hmm. sort of um, cost of living for students who are maybe being in London um, and specifically with SOAS? Yep, absolutely. Um, the one thing to say is it's difficult in this format to provide a detailed um point by point budget breakdown and of course um there are lots of ways that you can supplement your income as a student part-time work be that being a student ambassador um as we mentioned it is important to be mindful um of the costs of living associated with being in a global city like London, they are um, elevated, but certainly they're manageable. I would say the main things to be aware of is if you are an international student, who would have to apply for a student visa to come and study with us. Be mindful that there is a maintenance um, requirement that you must show that you are able to um, fund yourself and your living whilst you are a student. and um, that's important to bear in mind and we do have um, for home students who would be funded through the student finance company there is a maintenance allowance typically associated with that which is higher aimed um, for institutions in London compared to out but certainly it's something to be mindful of um, and there's much more information on our website in terms of what that breaks down to and detailed accommodation costs but typically all things in it's likely to be over £1,000 um, a month if we look at accommodation and travel and food and everything burrowed into one and we have like I mentioned a detailed breakdown of that on our website but there's lots of ways that you can budget and um, supplement your income through part-time work. Um, so quite an important one that's come through now. Can you talk about how SOAS has dealt with uh, COVID and sort of including within that the sort of prospect for students who are interested in uh, doing a year abroad? Yep, absolutely. So the main thing to reassure you um, in terms of COVID is that since the start of the pandemic, the institution has um, Apologies if you could hear the hustle and bustle of London outside my window. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, the main thing to reiterate is that SOAS has um, been taking lots of precautions and continues to take lots of precautions and um, make efforts to mitigate any sort of increased risk posed by um, the pandemic. Um, we did have a period of completely online learning in common with all UK institutions at the height of the pandemic. And since the start of this academic year, so for September 2021, um, we've been seeing our students come back to campus in most circumstances, come to the UK for their study, which has been really encouraging. And how we've operated so far in this current term is that our large scale teaching, so in terms of lectures where you're likely to be around many more students, those lectures have taken place online. And where possible, we've had our small scale teaching. So in most cases, things like seminars and tutorials have taken place in person because it's much easier to facilitate social distancing and to help make sure that everybody feels safe and supported um, where those numbers are smaller. And then alongside that for term one, we've had a small number of students continue to um, or begin their studies online. And then from term two, um, all of our students will be here and we're hopeful to move to more and more um, in-person face-to-face teaching, particularly at that smaller scale. Um, as restrictions ease. Of course, we keep we continue to take that into account and to watch restrictions and how they are changing. And we'll um, be sure to follow all the relevant guidelines and to make sure that we adapt our teaching accordingly if anything does change. But certainly, we're moving 
towards more face-to-face -face engagement and to making sure that our students can have or get back some elements of that traditional campus experience. But in terms of being on campus, we continue to right through this whole term, we've had face masks in place, increased ventilation, social distancing, um, number caps, just lots of things to help our students feel safe um, as they come onto campus and engage with their learning for the in-person components. It's likely as we move through and look ahead to the new year that there will still be some element of um, digital engagement. We found that that's worked well in some cases. Lots of our students have really appreciated um, having lectures online, for example. And what we're keen to do is take forward the really great elements that we've learned from this past um, few months in this past term and sort of um, blend that with all of the face-to-face -face engagement that we know our students um, value and appreciate and really helps um, them to succeed. In terms of study abroad, we continue to review that. If you are um, thinking of September entry next year, then the best thing to do is just to keep checking the website, to keep um, updated and stay informed. But if you are thinking of study abroad then, and you're thinking about September entry, it's likely that you would do your study abroad after your second year of study. Um, and so in that sense, there's lots of time left to evolve and hopefully for the situation to um, improve from travel for travel restrictions and risks um, associated with that to ease. But we have had some disruption, um, understandably, due to travel bans and travel restrictions. But we're hopeful that as we move forward and as things open up, um, that there will be more and more of those opportunities returning. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to roll probably about four or five questions into sort of one here. So lots of people have been asking about um, sort of when is a good time to make an application and then off the back of that how long does it take to hear back from the admissions team perfect so our applications are open now that's the one thing to um, encourage you with and certainly um at undergraduate level do be mindful of the UCAS um, equal consideration deadline in January at SOAS we'll continue to accept applications and review them beyond that um, but do be mindful um, of that equal consideration and it's likely if you're a prospective undergraduate student joining the call today from a UK school then it's very likely that your teachers have set an even earlier deadline um, but we will continue to review applications beyond that we review our applications as they come in so if you would like to be considered for September 2022 entry I'd really encourage you um, to get that submitted and get the ball rolling. In terms of postgraduate admissions, our applications are open and there's lots of sort of detailed advice about how to apply online through our website, um, on the website itself, but it's a free online application via the SOAS website that will allow you to um, select both the first and the second choice program. And again, very similarly, I would say, get that application in. And specifically, if you are thinking of applying for any funding or scholarships, whatever that looks like, the earlier your application, the better, because what that means is that you've given yourself ample time to receive a decision and to make sure that you can also have the information or the decisions that you need to meet any relevant deadlines for those external scholarships. So really, the earlier, the better. Um, and in terms of decision making, um, from the SOAS side, from our admissions team, it will generally take between four to six weeks for you to receive an update after submitting your completed application. Please make sure when you submit your applications that it has all the required information in it, all the documents that and we need and what that means is that you can avoid any unnecessary delays that our admissions team have all the documents that they need and are able to assess and make a holistic decision based on all the information that you've provided but generally speaking decisions can take anywhere from four to six weeks and our admissions team are working hard to review those as thoroughly and as efficiently as possible I'm very mindful um, of the time. And so Dan, I don't know if there's maybe one more question um, that we can try and answer before we end the session. Yeah, still, um, still plenty of unanswered ones, but we'll do our best to get back to you all afterwards. 
Um, maybe one final one to end on is whether the job opportunities that are available at SOAS and in London, will they be um, equally available for both international students and home students? Is there any difference there? So there's no, um, in terms of during your study, in terms of during your studies, if you want to work, um, the only thing to be mindful of as an international student studying here on a student visa is that there is a cap on the amount of time that you can um, work each week. It's currently 20 hours a week. There is a cap. So that's the only thing that is worth bearing in mind or sort of differentiating um, between certainly during your time as a student. And then beyond that, we're very, very excited about the, the reintroduction of the graduate route visa um, for students who are already with us on a student visa for their studies, which will really help give international students the opportunity to pursue um, graduate employment in the UK. And if you do have any questions about the graduate route visa, um, which is kicking off this year, um, then I'd really encourage you to um, consult the UKBI website. Again, there's lots of information online, which as we sort of head towards the reintroduction of the scheme, there's lots of information in terms of eligibility criteria and what that will mean for you as an international student looking to um, pursue employment in the UK after your studies. But in terms of during, the one thing to be mindful of if you are an international student studying with us on a student visa is just that weekly cap on the amount of hours that you can work and we've got lots of information on our website to help you move through that. Alrighty, I think what we will do then is we'll end the session here. I'm really sorry that we haven't um, had the time to reply to each and every um, question specifically. If you are already an applicant who has submitted an application and has a question about your specific case, then you should, in correspondence from SOAS, have access to the admissions email address that you'll need. If you are still having trouble, please get in touch with us via our email address. Let me see if I can find it here, study at soas.ac.uk, and we'll make sure that your query gets directed to the right person or the relevant team at SOAS. And as Dan's mentioned, we'll work hard to get this recording of the session and to make sure that the questions we didn't answer can get answered in follow-up. But thank you so much for joining us. Have a lovely evening, and we really hope to see some of you at SOAS next September.